kids doing? We're playing video games, Dad! Now you listen here, kids. Ugh, Tommy, get out of there. Now listen up. Wife, turn off the TV. Kids, you're clearly having fun right now. And as your father, it's my duty to burden you and guilt you about all the things you take for granted in your day-to-day -day life. Cozy up on the couch, because I'm going to talk to you about a little something I like to call Hiroshima. The bombing of Hiroshima was executed by the United States under the so-called Manhattan Project in 1945. It was conducted by a physicist, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and was the first bomb of its kind to be used in warfare. The bomb was codenamed Little Boy, and was made from the ultra-rare uranium-235 isotope. If you don't understand how that works, kids, then you're the most maladjusted group of four-year-olds that I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. Oh, and it was never tested, because it was that good. The Target Planning Committee left no stone unturned when it came to the choice of targets for the bombing of the Hiroshimians. Everything imaginable was taken into consideration. Alas, they were left with three choices. Hiroshima, Yokohama, Kokura, and Kyoto. Let's face the facts. From at least a bazillion feet in the air, are you really going to see a small military target such as Kokura? Eh, <coughs> no. How about Kyoto? Pretty huge, man! Plus, it'll be psychologically ruined, and our names will be in the junior high textbooks all around the nation for the next, like, 20... No! 21 years! Oh, excuse me. I do not believe that we should bomb Kyoto. You see, several summers ago, my lovely lady wife and I had traveled to the Kyoto for our honeymoon, and the two of us had rather fancied the spectacular array of little bonsai plants. Oh, you wouldn't believe all the little bonsai plants. Hey, fine. Scratch Kyoto, then. How about Hiroshima? It's surrounded by hills, so the intense bomb explosion thing will be, you know, concentrated. <coughs> Enola Gay to Northfield Air Base. This is Colonel Tibbetts, 1815 o'clock. We are currently 32,000 feet above the beautiful Hiroshima coastline, and not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> what did you say the name of the airplane was again? Shut it, Maury. Don't forget whose jean jacket you're wearing. Besides, it was named after my mother. In a matter of moments, 60 kilograms of uranium-235 will detonate from 1,900 feet above the panoramic view of Hiroshima. Heck. Sounds good to me. Three, two, one. At this time, Japanese military personnel had noticed a plane flying overhead, so they sent out a pre-recorded broadcast which civilians had heard on several other occasions. Hey, Japan. Um, it's kind of a plane flying above us. And I don't know about you, but... I'd probably go inside. I mean, I'm just advising. I'm not telling you to do this, but, you know, just in case, if I want to go inside, um, might not want to be out in case, you know, something bad happens. <laughs> but something bad happened indeed. Although only 1.38% of the uranium fission properly, there was still lots of other bad that happened. Could you explain using a pie chart, maybe? Go on, honey bunch. Show them that pie chart of yours. Ah, for the love of... Okay, fine. Yay! Daddy's gonna show us his pie chart. Daddy's gonna show us his pie chart. Damn, it's freaking pie chart. This devastatingly large piece of pie chart represents the number of people who died of immediate causes such as burns from fire or being mercilessly penetrated by nuclear radiation within two-thirds of a mile. 
Oh, did I mention that 20 American prisoners of war were killed too? This piece of pie chart, inferior in size to the last but equally as devastating, represents the number of people who were killed by falling debris from nuclear fallout. As you can't see because my hand's in the way, this puny little scrap of pie represents the number of people within the first two-thirds of a kilometer who weren't affected or anything interesting like that. These people weren't either, and were further than two-thirds of a mile away at the time. These ones were and were killed in the blast as well. And finally, we have the portion of people who did live through the incident, but died later of cancer, wounds, or other radiation-related effects within five years. If that didn't get you all teary-eyed, there may be a crying geisha with a radiation burn will. <laughs> The first official port of the bombing of Hiroshima came from President Truman's speech broadcasting throughout the United States and later aired in Japan. In this speech he addressed that if the Japanese did not surrender, the United States would continue to attack Japan with equally devastating results. Tokyo radio stations described it as practically all living things, human and animal, were literally seared to death. Two days later on August 8th, Russia had a ginormous surprise for Japan. Hello, I'm Russian. For the sake of this movie, I'm being portrayed as a complete warmonger. Oh, and I declare war on Japan. <laughs> America, with their pride shattered from the Soviet Union entering the war on the Eastern Front, flew planes over Japan, raining down on them leaflets with their aggressive agenda. We are in possession of the most destructive explosive ever devised by man. A single one of our newly developed atomic bombs is actually the equivalent in explosive power to what 2,000 of our giant B-29s can carry out in a single mission. This awful fact is one for you to ponder, and we solemnly assure you is grimly accurate. We have just begun to use this weapon against your homeland. If you still have any doubt, make inquiry to what happened to Hiroshima when just one atomic bomb fell on that city. Destruction seemed to have reached a plateau, and due mainly to staff shortages, temporary first aid stations began to diminish. At the same time, those who had evacuated the city began to make their way back to the barren ruins they formerly called home. Isn't that right, Pumpkin? Unfortunately for the people of Hiroachima, there were no companies or even factories looking to hire because 90% of the city had been completely wiped out. Thus, there was no food to eat for miles, and the civilians were beginning to worry about developing malnutrition or other side effects from the bombing. To add insult to injury, a typhoon soon after struck the city, September 17th, leaving everything submerged with water or destroyed. Most people just gave up on recolonizing and went back to the country. But later that fall, beautiful weather and splendid irrigation yielded metaphorical horseweed plants across the burnt-out city. Those who were left unemployed began to farm the horseweed as an ingredient for dumplings which could be sold. The taste was deplorable, but not in the comparison to starving to death. Since then, Japan has remained pacifist in any international disputes, and Hiroshima has become something of a shrine to honor survivors as well as push for the abolishment of nuclear weapons and the message of everlasting peace. In conclu- Hey! You little twerps weren't even listening to me anyway! Fine then, go about your greedy little 21st century pleasure. See if I care! Okay, Dad, but you're really missing out. <laughs>